In this video, we're going to learn how to do if-then statements against the application we're building inside of Power Apps. So stay tuned. As you didn't remember, we've been building a shout-out application. And our next stage is to build a gallery that's going to represent our active activity feed. So for the activity feed, we want to have the ability to say, show me all the, all the shout-outs or just my shout-outs, or the ones I've actually done shout-outs for. So this is going to be our if-then statement we're going to derive. So to begin with, just to kind of recap the application we're building, you'll see our, our, our mock-up right here, where we're going to focus on this right pane today, and that's building this activity feed that you see right here. And we'll be able to select one of these three options, and our if-then statement will derive our filter based on that. We also have uh, built the application so far, and I've made some small changes to it over uh, from the recording, but we've we've added the ability here to, as I go and look at look at Alan, for example, we'll select this guy and we'll then add a shout out here. So we'll come back to this in a moment to show you know what what changes I've actually made. So if I go back into here again, let's go ahead and add our gallery, make it a vertical gallery. Okay, whoop. I made it a little too big there. It's all right. We'll come back to that. And I want to change the data source to then point to the culture shoutouts. And I want to do just a simple. I'll keep. I'll stick with this right now. We'll come. We may alter that as time goes on. So first thing you're going to notice is a lot of the things that I I thought I had available to me are not here. So for example, this picture, sample image, but you're not seeing the picture inside that SharePoint gallery. So to get to that picture, we have to go a little bit of trick to get there. So I'll do my nominated. Now, I'm actually in my image now. I'm in the gallery image. And I'll say, you'll notice if I, as I scroll down here, there's no image here of the actual person. So to get there, I'll type my, my, my uh, I'll type in this item, which means look at the value I'm looking at right now, which is optional. And I want to find out the picture of the person that's actually nominated. Again, that this item is actually optional in this case. Nominated, hit dot. And now we're going to see the items underneath that. So the reason why we're seeing this, you may remember from our last video, which you can see in episode nine, we're using the people picker inside of SharePoint. Now that people picker has the ability to store multiple, multiple different types of fields all packed inside of one field. So for example, in this case, we're storing the things like our name, uh, our email address, and also photo, department, and all sorts of other good things. So when I refer to that field, that people picker field, I can add a dot at the end and go drill into other things underneath that. Now there's some downsides to that and also mainly around delegation, so you'll see that in a moment here as well. So in my case, the image is going to be my uh, picture, it's called, I believe. There it is. And now we'll see our picture. And then I also wanted to have this drive the rest of the things also. Here, here's a title of the, of it. Actually, I already, already picked that one here, the title of the shout out. Uh, you can kind of see it here. Look how it's doing it. Nominate by claims. claims. So you're seeing a whole, whole bunch of stuff that's been packed into this. So if I were to go and change this to instead, like, you know, the short title about uh, the date maybe of when they got shouted out to, I'll just, I'll just do maybe create a date. There we go. And it looks pretty good. It'd be nice to know what, what, what cultural category they're being uh, representing here. So maybe I'll put uh, in parentheses here, something like, okay, how about I put this item dot culture category, I believe it's called. I need to put my ampersand here to pin that. Culture category, there we go. And ampersand. There we go. All right, so we can see a little little, little uh, uh, piece around it, and we can of course uh, this is this is this is more of a report in this case. We don't need some of the items. Notice it's a little hard to click on that, so I'm gonna hit the little pencil here and then click on. I don't want people to drill through to it right now. Uh, I want to kind of make this a little bit bigger, so we have a little more wiggle room to kind of play with. There we go. And we'll I'll, I'll, off camera, I'll do more filtering of this uh, off off camera to make it look prettier. So now. We want to make this a lot easier to see uh, people I've done shout outs to and people that have done shout outs to me. So to do that, I'm going to choose a drop down control. There's a whole bunch of ways of representing this, but I'm going to do a drop down control here. So let's do a drop down. There we go. Okay. And I want three values inside that. So to do that, I'm going to actually, I could point to a table, of course, that has those values. Or in my case, I'm going to actually create a, a table on the fly here. So to create the table on the fly, I'll just use a table command here. And I'll open parenthesis, do a 
uh, squirrely bracelet, curly bracket, and any item I do, any new row, will have its own little representative curly braces around that. So I'll just call it item, and I'll say all shoutouts. Okay, and then I'll end that one, do a comma, and then let me just kind of steal this so we can cheat a little bit so you're not having to watch me type all this. Boom and boom. Close the parenthesis. I'll say how we call this one my shout outs and and I'll say this set shout outs set shout outs all right with that now done we're seeing the drop down box uh, let's let's add a little bit more flair to this also by putting a, a a nice bar across this so the so the themes can kind of pick it up let's do just a quick uh, rectangle there we go just put that across. Okay, and I'm gonna send this to the back, so it will so go home and send this to the back. There we go. All right, so now we can see that now do this. So now on to our if statement. So I want to if I wish you select sent shoutouts, I want to only see the ones I sent, and vice versa if I, I want to see the ones I'm part of also. So if I select this gallery, you notice that I have my data source selected. Now the items in the gallery though are going to be filtered based on the circumstance above that. So let's give this a little better name so we can kind of find it later. And let's go ahead and rename this. I'll just call this uh, you know, uh, drop down, and I'll call this uh, you know, filter shoutouts. I don't know. Good enough. All right, so we can find that a little easier now. And when I select inside this, all right, so. What I want to do now is if it says, if it's a, a shout out to you, I want to go ahead and show it now. So I'll go ahead and say if, open parenthesis, and you know this is kind of helping me drive this now as well. So I'll say if the drop down box, which, which was called DDR, there we go. So if the value of the drop down box is selected dot value, if the value of that drop down box is going to be equal to my shout outs, it's going to be case sensitive, so you got to be careful here. I'm going to double check to make sure I actually got the right cases. Yeah, it's all, all camel case in my case. All right, so if it's, if it's that value, comma, what event do you want to do? So I'm going to go ahead and say just show all of them right now. We'll come back and filter this in a moment. Comma, uh, and then I'll say what other conditions do I want? I want three, three conditions. So let me go ahead and just kind of cheat here and select this again. So if it's not that, then it might be this sent shout outs. If it's not that, it's going to fall into the catch-all statement, right? The catch-all statement just show everything. Okay, so again, I have not actually done all my conditions inside this yet. It's going to return the same thing no matter what I do right now, but you get the idea so far. Now I need to actually put my values inside this, and when I do that, we're going to see some of the bigger gotchas against the SharePoint list as I do that. The main gotcha we're going to have is keep in mind this is an embedded field, right? That people picker field. Because it's a people picker field, <laughs> say that 10 times fast, it's going to uh, cause some issues. We'll see. So let's do our first one here my shout outs. So to do that, I want to do a filter against this now. So let's do a filter. And this is my shout out. So I'll say, all right, filter this data set, comma. And we're going to filter the um, the name of the person in this case, right? So the name is going to be nominated, um, nominated. There we go. Dot, and I want to look for the email address. There we go. So the ones that I actually got received is equal to, and then I can say Office 365. Dot uh, users, and it'll be my profile. And then there we go. So close parenthesis dot email. Okay, so this is going to filter based on my email address uh, in this case. So I've got one closed parenthesis. I think I'm missing an open. Let's see where we got. We got, got I'm missing a closed parenthesis, probably, I'm guessing. Nope. Okay, it's not like an email. Oh, it's mail, I think, actually. The, uh, the tricky part is some of the functions call for mail. Like if I were to use um, user, and, and there it actually uses email. Here it actually uses mail. Now, one of the things you're noticing as soon as I do that is this delegation warning. Now, this delegation warning, what that's telling us, 
if I, when you look this up, I'll put this in the notes of the session here also. The delegation warning is telling us that, hey, I do allow you to do this. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to suck this list in. Um, what it's doing is it's saying, all right, SharePoint, I am not going to you know, pass a where clause to you, essentially. Instead, I'm going to suck the entire list down and then apply the filter on the client side instead of the server side. Now, you may be wondering that because it's SharePoint actually allows this, an equal sign, to be delegated. But the reason why is this is an embedded field. So when you use things like the people picker, uh, there is not, it's not going to be as clean to do that as, you, as it might be. So this is where our workaround comes in. So the workaround is I actually wrote the email address to a secondary field also, and I can then do it. So you'll notice here, if I go back to this one more time and just change this from nominated to nominated, and I've got a new field here called nominated email, now the delegation warning is going to go away, okay? I'm just looking at the delegation warning right now. There it goes. Okay, still not happy right now, and it's because this mail, this mail one is giving me issues right now. So luckily what's happening in this case is it does cap you at, at, um, at 500 records when you have that. So let me go ahead and play this real quick and show you what I mean. So if I do this if statement, say I only want the ones that I sent, actually it's my the ones I actually my shout outs, there we go. I'm only getting the one that was actually my shout out in this case. So now I have this, this is assuming that I have uh, uh, this can be an issue if I have more than 500 records in this SharePoint list. Now in my case, this SharePoint list is not going to be a huge deal. It's, I've got I've got 500. I, I'm not going to have hundreds and hundreds of shoutouts in this case. But if you feel you're going to have that, you have a delegation warning like this. You can go over to File and go to App Settings. And one of the app settings under Advanced here is actually how many rows do you want to allow for non-delegatable events. Now that that can be you know a thousand, that, but uh, typically speaking, you're not going to go above two thousand records. If I go and I actually type in like twenty two hundred, it's going to start to give me a grief there. So gotchas like that can can really can really hurt you. Now keep in mind, it's also going to be much slower. So not not only just because you can do it doesn't mean you want to do it in many cases. But I do have a, a fewer amount of rows here, so it should work. The reason I'm getting the uh, the other issue right now, if I were to point that to the other field. I am going to, I mean, I'm going to fidget with it to get it to work here. So my last one here, my last if statement was to go ahead and change this last piece here. Okay, so I have my selected value here, sent showcase, and let's go ahead and do a filter around that. Matter of fact, I'm just going to steal the filter we have here. There we go. And paste that in to the above one also. And also, you'll find weirdness when things are, are single row shots like that. It does give you some weirdness sometimes also. So let me go ahead and just paste this filter in where we saw here before. Paste that in. And this time it's not nominated. It's nominated by. But I want nominated by email. There we go. This is my extra field that I created here. And now we're seeing this. Now the challenge we're having right now, what's making this a, a delegatable problem challenge right now, is this dot email right now. So if I were to notice, for example, if I were to type in my actual email address right now, just say equals, you know, be night, whatever, problem goes away. So it's because this office function has given me all sorts of grief. Let's try one more piece here and see if that will actually make things a little easier here. Your answer is truly to actually store that into a variable and then do it there instead. So if I go to, go to, go to user.email, let's see if that makes happier now. No, it's still unhappy. So the answer that I've, I've used to solve this problem for is to create a startup variable that has that email address inside of it. And we showed this in our last in a video, uh, I think it's episode one or two, where we actually store that on startup, that email address. And if we use it, the variable here versus this office function, then it will work. So what's happening is for every row going through it, it's having to run that same routine again, which gives it all sorts of grief. So in case you're curious, uh, hang on. If you don't, no worries, we're going to stop the video now. But as you can see, for the if-then statement here, we have, we're basically opening it here. 
You can have multiple nested if statements by just putting commas between each one. You can also have and, uh, double and percents, double on orders as well to make that work as well. But really simple to do if then statements inside of Power Apps. So if you are curious how to get rid of that delegation, here's how we can do that. So what I'm going to do is I am going to do on startup now. So I'm going to go to my whole form and on startup under action, I'm going to go to on start. And I'm going to pop in my email address. I'll say uh, var current user. And I'll make that equal to, um, how about we say, oh, let's go ahead and say set, actually. Set var current user. And then comma, the value is going to be office365 dot uh, my profile. It's office365 user, excuse me, dot my profile and dot mail. So with that now done, I just had to close and open the application to basically trigger this, this on start event to happen. Now that I've done that, I can go ahead and replace these guys with my variable. Problem one solved. Let's solve the problem two. There we go. Whoop. I forgot my equal sign now. Oh, no, I just kind of copy quite enough there. There we go. So now is a non-delegatable event now because that email address is only run once on App Startup. And now until I actually, you know, I go through and and uh, start the application over again, uh, it's going to give me issues right now. You'll notice if I go over here, hit this sent shoutouts, uh, nothing's going to work until I close and open the application again. So some of the gotchas around that, of course, uh, really simple to close and cl save, save and close, and you're all set the races. So oh, oop, and I, I'm showing the wrong camera there. There we go. So just to show that code one more time here, I didn't realize I was still looking at the wrong camera there. Sorry about that. Uh, here's my set variable that I did on, on start. And then as I look at the gallery, I just change these two items here to point to the two, the, the gallery item right there instead. So by changing that little bit of code, it now is going to run that once uh, versus on, on a row by row basis. All right, sorry about technical difficulties there, guys. I uh, hope you enjoyed this presentation though. And again, if then statements are the really simple part, it's a delegation part and really makes things uh, uh, really a nightmare sometimes to, to, to do inside of Power Apps. So if you think about generally speaking, if, you're, if it's a row by row operation, it's gonna trigger a delegatable event, even though equals is allowed events. All right, see you on Monday, guys. Thank you again, have a great weekend. Bye-bye.